Thank you for joining us. I'm April Knight and you're watching News 2 Week in Review. Topping our stories tonight, employees of the Water and Power Authority staged a protest on Wednesday in front of the legislative building on St. Thomas. Their concerns, safety and fair wages. They're angry and frustrated and they want lawmakers to step in. News 2's James Gardner has more. This was the scene outside the legislature building on St. Thomas on Wednesday as WAPA employees took to the streets to protest against their employer. In a protest that took place after hours to not conflict with union contracts, WAPA workers united against management for serious issues plaguing rank and file employees, from unsafe working conditions to unfair wages to tattered uniforms. Visibly frustrated linemen and groundmen walked both sides of the street, wheeled in place cars declaring their concerns. The Wednesday demonstrations is set against the backdrop of frequently failing generating units and rocky finances for the utility. The legislature recently approved a request by the authority to increase its debt ceiling from $500 million to $750 million, which while not increasing WAPA's capacity to borrow over its existing contractual obligations, does give the legal green light to do so. Kelvin Fredericks, an 80-year-old veteran with WAPA, underscored their problem with stagnant wages. The last pay increase negotiated by their union was in 2013. Since then, they haven't seen a bump in pay. Six years running without negotiated wages or pay or retroactive salary. We are here one year and change after the scam, and we have outside workers, which we were thankful for, to rebuild the community. We needed them, we thanked them. But it's a year now of pass, and they are here getting a lot of pay from our company and our government. Would you invite? guests to eat at your home and put your children in the corner to watch you and your guests eat. So we lay in this squarely and the government and our leaders at WAPA. You check? We've been neglected. We don't have equipment. We lack in tools. Our other question is we want to know why the FEMA and the federal government gave the Virgin Islands WAPA department five children hey, trucks with chip on. And just a week later ago, WAPA and the board signed a contract for us to trim trees up to one million dollars. Why would they do that? While protesters freely commented on the serious nature of their concerns, many declined to give their names for fear of retaliation. One employee holding up a sign protesting stagnant pay lamented that he may not have a job to come back to the next day for showing up at the protests. On Wednesday, the protests made enough noise to get the attention of not only the motorists who stopped and honk, but also from lawmakers who emerged from their offices to talk to protesters. For News 2, this is James Gardner. And we will keep you updated. Meanwhile, earlier this week, Governor Kenneth Mapp held a town hall meeting at Charlotte Amali High School on St. Thomas to announce that the high school is now set to be torn down and rebuilt. At the meeting held on Monday, the governor and lieutenant governor, along with education officials, said that CAHS is one of the four schools in the territory that meet the federal criteria for complete reconstruction. Adelita Cancrine Junior High School on St. Thomas, Julia Sprouse School on St. John, and Arthur Richards Junior High School on St. Croix are the three other schools that could also be rebuilt. The purpose of the meeting on Monday night was to see where the CAHS community staff, teachers, parents, and alumni. CHS uh, teacher Yambakise Richardson proposed a five-story tiered structure that would be divided by subjects, but former CHS principal Jeanette Smith-Barry said that more thought is being given right now to the facilities and not the students. And what the plan is for a school to get classes out of this auditorium, because this is where classes are being taught, to regain our programs that are lost. What is the plan for accreditation, which is to take place next year? What is the plan when this school celebrates its 100th anniversary in 2020? The fact is, there were decisions made that put the students of 
this school and a number of other schools at a serious disadvantage. Meanwhile, the United States Coast Guard announced that they recently seized some $30 million worth of cocaine after a high-speed chase off the coast of Puerto Rico. More than 2,000 pounds of cocaine was confiscated. During the pursuit by the Coast Guard, uh, cutter, the Coast Guard cutter Donald Horsley, the smugglers landed on a beach in Luquillo and abandoned their go-fast vessel. Authorities located and recovered 47 bales of cocaine from the water and the abandoned go-fast. The seized contraband is in the custody of Immigration and Customs Enforcement, which is leading the investigation into this case. Coming up next, a local business is marking Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is October, and giving away free mammograms. Details when we come back. Welcome back. West Bay Supermarket on St. Thomas is recognizing Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is this October, and they're encouraging women in the community to do the same. That's why they're giving away some $10,000 worth of free mammograms this month in the form of vouchers that women can take to the St. Thomas Radiology Lab. Here's how you can take advantage. I've lived in this community my whole life, and during that time, every October, I have memories of just major corporations just hanging a ribbon on their door. And that was their contribution. Um, and that always bothered me because, you know, it's like, what else are you doing? And there was never an answer. So uh, when we started managing West Bay Supermarket, I thought that this was an opportunity for me to change that, right? Major corporations like this have a responsibility, you know. Um, Women make up such a, a huge part of our market, right? It's the women here in this community that primarily shop for their families. So those are the faces that I'm seeing every day. So this really was a collaborative um, effort amongst the management team here. You know, we knew that October was coming up and uh, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So we really wanted to do something for the women of the Virgin Islands. Um, it feels like our corporate responsibility. Uh, to take care of the women that support us in the community. We also approached WSTA, Addie Otley's morning show. Um, we all know that he has a huge coverage in the morning. Most of the Virgin Islands listens to him. And so we went to them and we told them about this wonderful partnership uh, with St. Thomas Radiology. And they came up with uh, a great extension of that. Women can call in in the morning between 7 and 9 a.m. daily. Um, and Addie gives two vouchers per day to uninsured or underinsured women of the territory. And then they make their appointment with St. Thomas Radiology. They take their voucher with them, redeem them at the time that the service is provided, and it's covered 100%. We didn't want to require that all of the appointments happen in October because a lot of women get their annual exams throughout the course of the year. So while the reward comes in October, the voucher is good until the end of April, thereby you know, extending that time period for the convenience of these very busy women who are taking care of our community every single day. I think it's an awesome opportunity for ladies to find out like, by itself and like willingly go mm -hmm. instead of waiting too late and I think it's like pretty awesome that a store is actually sponsored like, instead of them paying out of pocket and it makes you want to do your self checks at home like you know when, when I was in high school mm -hmm. our nurse I was to sit in the shower like lift your hand up mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the whole thing so you can do a home test and you can do an actual in the doctor test. Recently I learned that a woman that I work with is a four-time breast cancer survivor and you know she's just this powerhouse of a woman and you would never know because she doesn't talk about it I was really struck by it because she found the strength within herself to survive it but not only that is dedicating all of her extra time this month to other women to make sure that they're surviving it and they're uplifted and they're supported we really looked at it as an honest um, organic transparent heartfelt uh, effort to these these women who spend so much time taking care of our communities and their kids and their own families and to think that they are not do not taking care of themselves 
Meanwhile, all three islands, St. Thomas, St. Croix and St. John, all participated in Take Back the Night, events jointly sponsored by the Family Resource Center, the Women's Coalition of St. Croix and the Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Council. On St. Croix, amid a sea of purple, the march in Fredericksted from the fish market to the Eliza McBean clock tower was as silent as it was powerful. Over 150 participants who gathered at the base of the clock tower were witness to a performance by Music in Motion, a music video by Mother Nile, and a reading of Maya Angelou's I Rise. The emotional reading of Remember My Name were the names of those who have died in St. Croix of domestic violence was punctuated with the placing of a pair of shoes often belonging to the victim on the steps of the clock tower. But the Take Back the Night March is all about victims of domestic violence, survivors of domestic violence. It's about victims that steal victims and can't get out. It's about survivors that got out of domestic violence. And it's about victims who died who couldn't get out in town. So this march is in their memory. Well, last Sunday, World Food Day returned to the UVI campus on St. Croix after a one-year hiatus due to Hurricane Maria. The grounds near the Great Hall were filled with locally grown produce, food vendors, seedling distribution, live music by the Rising Star Steel Pan Orchestra, and a performance by the II Cultural Dancers. In addition, the Passion Fruit Blast competition featured the many delicious ways to use passion fruit, and the Super Chef competition featured the next generation generation of St. Croix chefs. The impact of World Food Day goes beyond the U.S. Virgin Islands, according to Delegate to Congress Stacy Plaskett. We know here at home that many of those that are in rural areas that live in poverty include the Virgin Islands, where one-third of the children of the Virgin Islands live below the poverty line. That's why World Food Day is particularly important for us to encourage here. Because when we think of world hunger, we often think of third world countries, but we do not think about the Virgin Islands or places like Washington DC, New York City, rural areas of Nebraska, reservations throughout this country where children, families are hungry every day. Well, one political party is celebrating its 50-year anniversary this month. The Independent Citizens Movement is inviting Virgin Islanders to come out to Emancipation Garden this Sunday, October 21st, to learn more about this political party that's been part of Virgin, I Virgin Islands history for decades. The event will take place on Sunday, October 21st at 3.30 in the Emancipation Garden. I would like people to come to the program on Sunday to recognize all those brave political soldiers that stood up and dared to emerge a homegrown political party um, responsive to itself, um, excellent service to the community, provided excellent leadership and direction redirection at times in order to improve the lives of all the people that is living in the territory. Coming up next, our Pet of the Week plus an art show for a cause. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Time for a pet of the week. This week, it's all about Jason, a humane society a humane society dog who really does not want to stay in a kennel. He needs a forever home, and he's hoping to find it soon. Donna Nemeth, the director of operations at Humane Society of St. Thomas, tells us all about Jason. This is Jason. He's about three. No, he's about six years old. And he came to us from actually what was probably a pretty good life on the street. He had a lot of people taking care of him around the Holy Family Church. And he was well fed and, and enjoying his life there. But then he was attacked by a dog and had a really bad injury on one of his front legs. And someone brought him into us with an infection that we were able to treat. 
and now we're hoping to find him a good solid home where he'll be taken care of. He loves to go out on outings with us. He's great with other dogs. He likes everybody that he meets, but he's getting a little depressed here in the shelter, so we're hoping to find him a foster home or a permanent home um, so that he can get out and, and really see what living in a home on a couch or on a nice bed on the floor is going to be like. There you go. Now remember, if you or anyone you know is interested in any of the pets that we feature on Pet of the Week, don't hesitate to call the Humane Society at 775-0599 or visit www.hsstt.com. The Humane Society also offers a free spaying and neutering program where you can take your cat or dog to a vet of your choice with a voucher from the shelter. You can help the Humane Society by fostering or adopting the rescue animals by donating supplies or if you're traveling by volunteering to transport their pets to a mainland home or shelter that will take them in. Again, that's 775-0599 or www.hsstt.com. Well, one of our own, Vaya engineer Ensor Colon, is known to many in the community as Ensor Colon, the abstract painter. Ensor's art has popped up in various galleries as well as events where he does live performances. This Friday night, Ensor is performing at the VI Puerto Rico Friendship Event at the Council on the Arts in downtown Charlotte, Amali. It's a performance for a cause that will benefit Ensor's grandnephew, two-year-old Eric Dariel, who is battling brain cancer. Uh, this time, the event of my show is to contribute uh, for my sister, sister grand grandson. Mm -hmm. He's uh, Eric, Eric Derek, mm -hmm. and uh, he's a uh, brain cancer patient. Mm -hmm. Eric, Eric is a happy boy. Uh, he's uh, two years old. Mm -hmm. uh, He's strong. He's strong because the the cancer where he get is, is very is very uh, aggressive, mm -hmm. but he, he he doing good in the in the therapies in the chemotherapy, mm -hmm. and um, he's still fighting, mm -hmm. and we are uh, we we have a good good hope about his recovering. Okay. Let's see what the weather looks like in the next several days with our news to AccuWeather forecast. Good evening. We are still looking at very brisk winds here across the Virgin Islands as well as the leewards. Most of that moisture, as you can see on the current satellite, is to the south and towards Trinidad and Tobago, the ABC Islands, and extending out towards the Western Caribbean there. Our main concern will be brisk winds moving through. Any wave that we see in the coming days should be on the weaker side, not looking at any super robust moisture. Out towards the leeward islands is where we're getting plenty more cloud cover compared to our areas here in the U.S. Virgin Islands, even into the British Virgin Islands, not a whole bunch of cloud cover spotty activity crossing the region as we speak, and that's going to continue to be the case for tonight. Patchy clouds, showers, and cooling down to 78 for your low. Now, as we head into tomorrow, temperatures not changing here much. We're remaining in the upper 80s for St. John. Partial sunshine. Once again, we have that trade wind coming in, so some moisture will be making its way into the area for St. Thomas, topping off at 88. And if you're in St. Croix, topping off at 89 degrees, and also looking at partial sunshine with some showers throughout the day. And as we continue through this weekend, your marine forecast, well, still a bit choppy. We do advise that use caution on those smaller crafts. Waves are running four to six feet on the Atlantic for tomorrow and winds out of the east 10 to 15 knots. Waves are a little lesser here on the Caribbean side, but we still are going to be noticing very strong winds coming on through for the Caribbean sides 10 to 15 knots coming out of the northeast. So we definitely want you to use some caution, especially on those smaller crafts because of the choppy seas. And towards, Sat once again, Sunday rather, finishing out this weekend, we're talking some showers and spots and then noticing some of that activity kind of weakening into your Tuesday and Wednesday, becoming a bit more stray with the shower activity. Temperatures gonna remain in the upper 80s for your highs and in the upper 70s for your lows. Thank you for that. Stick around. You, your News 2 Sports is coming up next with Gary Anthony.
I'm Gary Anthony and this is News 2 Sports. Congratulations to the Boston Red Sox and Red Sox Nation for making it to the 2018 World Series by taking down last year's champion, the Houston Astros, 4-1 to win the American League Championship Series four games, 2-1. How did it happen? Red Sox pitcher David Price tossed six shutout innings to outdo Astros ace Justin Verlander. J.D. Martinez and rookie Rafael Devers belted homers to lead the Sox to their fourth World Series appearance in the last 13 years, where they will face either the Los Angeles Dodgers or the Milwaukee Brewers on Tuesday, October 23rd. On to the NFL, Thursday Night Football, where the Denver Broncos gave an old-fashioned beating to the Arizona Cardinals. How did it happen? Cardinals rookie QB Josh Rosen threw two picks in the first quarter, both returned for touchdowns, welcome to the NFL, and the Broncos wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders threw and caught a TD pass as the Broncos walloped the Cardinals 45-10. The UVI Basketball Classic opens hoop season in the VI next weekend at the UVI Sports and Fitness Center in St. Thomas. This year's Classic will feature Xavier University of Louisiana, Kaiser University of West Palm Beach, Florida, and the University of the Virgin Islands. The first game is on Friday, October 26, Xavier versus Kaiser. Saturday features Kaiser versus UVI, and Sunday's matchup will be Xavier versus UVI. So get your hoop dreams started right. That's it for sports. Have a great weekend. Thank you for that, Gary. And that's it for our show tonight. Make sure you follow us on Facebook at News2VI or Instagram at TV2USVI. We want to hear from you, so tag us on any stories you want to see on the news or send us a message on Messenger. You can also email us at newsdirector at TV2.VI. Thanks again for joining us on News2 Week in Review. I'm April Knight. We'll see you next time. Have a wonderful weekend.